What does the power of the devil do? It makes men and women dangerous. And Timothy began to de describe, Paul began to tell Timothy, for men will be lovers of themselves. If your selfishness, you think, begins and ends with you, you're wrong. If you're outside of Christ, you're capable of a selfishness that is literally supernatural. We are watching people say and do things we never thought Americans would ever say. We are watching them get up and boast, stand there in the most completely perverse extremes. And they say, this is me. This is who I am. And I'm going to tell you, the devil told you that. You are not that. That's not where you were born. Look at me. You were born to have peace. You were born to have innocence. You were born to be loved and to love somebody. And this nightmare that you're living, this obsession that you're following, you're following it by outside power that has lied to you. He said men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. In America, we have corporations that have told woman, women, we will pay for your abortion. And it, they come off as if this is some human nobility that a massive corporation will stand there and say, if you need to go to another state, we'll pay for it. And you think it's because they believe in abortion or women's rights. It's because it's better for them to send you there for one treatment than to pay many months of maternity leave. It's all about the money. We have politicians that are selling our oil to Russia who claim to be servants of, of America, voted in to office. The Bible says that there will come a day when people will love so money They'll, they'll give up their wife. They'll give up their sanity. They'll give up their, their rationality for money. And that's where we're living. And it's creeped into the church. Where we have people up in pulpits that it's all about the dollar. And it's all about being paid. And if you don't pay me, I'm not going to preach. Or if you don't pay me, I'm not going to perform. The Bible said they would love money. Oh, you know, Mara, you were doing good until you did that. Now, hold it. <laughs> the Bible says they'll be lovers of money, proud, boastful, blasphemers. The things that are being said about Jesus right now by comedians have never been said before the baseness of it. One of the leading commentators and journalists in Australia, she's on the news every night, and they were protesting the overruling of Roe v. Wade. Well, she was holding up a sign at a protest, newscaster of a major network, and it said, Mary the Virgin should have gotten an abortion. The Bible says the days would come when people would do those things. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. I'm going to take a moment here. Please bear with me. Help the man of God. Be patient with me. All right? I want you to look at four words. Just because I said four words doesn't mean it's going to take a long time. It doesn't. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Let's rehearse it. I'm going to say it again. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. This doesn't mean that you didn't leave a good tip or that you don't celebrate Thanksgiving for the right reason. It's darker. It's worse than that. This, the Bible is saying that a human has lost a natural element. It's gone. You see, that's what's happening right now through much of your lifestyle and much of what you believe, is you're, you're trying to convince yourself that this is self-improvement, when what it really is, it's further and further away from God, 
And I want to say this about the devil. In a movie, it said one time, the greatest trick that Satan ever pulled was to convince the world that he didn't exist. And I'm going to disagree a little bit because I think equal to that trick is his ability to dehumanize an individual without them knowing it. That's why you're no longer feeling things. That's why, and I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you, it says this, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Let's, let's define that. It means they've lost the power to feel. They don't feel anymore. Your child's laugh doesn't affect you the way it used to. A sunset isn't as pretty as it was. It's as if the palette of your soul has gone from color to black and white. And the Bible says, well, Mario, why are you taking so much time? Because ladies and gentlemen, they're not just watching me here in this tent. They're watching all over America. And it's time to take the moment, preach the word of God, help people. Help people. Now, let's talk about unforgiving. You may think, oh, that means that they hold on to a grudge. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that a part of one of the influences of diabetes on the body is that if you get a cut anywhere in your body, it may not ever close up. It may never heal again. Here's what the Bible is saying. That last cut in your divorce, that last cut in being fired, that last cut in being cheated on, you did not recover. You didn't heal. The Bible says unforgiving, unthankful, unloving, incapable. Can't do it. Can't feel love. Can't feel grateful. Can't feel forgiveness. Can't do it. It's gone. And in ancient Greeks, there was a group called the Stoics that actually thought that was enlightenment. They would even, to practice, would take their favorite pet and kill it and see if they felt nothing. And said, if I feel nothing, I've got it. I'm a true Stoic. The Bible is showing us clearly that we are becoming a dangerous nation that can discard its kids, leave its marriage, leave its gender, leave its sanity, get any drug, take any drug, drive anywhere I want, do anything I want, and think there's no consequence because the devil is lying to you about how your story is going to end if God does not intervene. Paul the Apostle said something amazing. He was explaining to a king. This is what I, I was on the way to the road. I was out killing Christians. I went to Damascus to destroy the Christian church. And in fact, it's the only time in the New Testament that you ever hear this. It's never said anywhere else. Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. But the Bible says in the book of Acts, Paul, Saul of Tarsus began to destroy the church. What an incredible indictment. And the Bible tells us that he's explaining, I was destroying Christianity and one day a light brighter than the sun knocked me off my horse and it said, the person you're persecuting is actually the Lord of the universe. And some of you are looking at me right now and say, I would never become a Christian. There's no way on earth I would ever become a Christian. Because Satan has gotten a hold of your mind and told you this is right and this is wrong. And Jesus said, behold, beware that your light be not darkness. That it's the opposite of what you think. That what you're planning to do with your marriage is the opposite of what you're supposed to do. That the way you're supposed to live is the opposite of the way you're living. 
that in fact something has gotten in you to control you and to, to philosophically, intellectually explain to you this is the way it is. And this is what you do in order to stay in that fantasy. You have to bury your emotions. You have, to, you have to fight off that moment late at night when your mind says, maybe there is a God. Maybe there is love. Maybe there is forgiveness. Maybe Christ did die for me on the cross. And maybe on the third day he did rise again. And the devil says, no, no, no. Take another pill. Get another sexual partner. Do this, do this, do this. Distract yourself. Every time sanity tries to break out, feel your life. And this is what Paul said. I was called of God, Paul said, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, to turn them from the power of Satan to the power of God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those that are sanctified by the faith in me. He said, that's what Jesus told me.